and welcome to this EU Data Fund webinar. My name is Julia Zagrotka and I work at the Publications Office of the European Union. EU Data Fund is an annual open data competition organized by the Publications Office. And this year, the fifth edition is quite special because the finals of the competition will take place online during the EU Open Data Days in November. EU Open Data Days combine two events, EU Datathon and the EU Database Conference on Open Data and Data Visualization. To start with, I will quickly show you the website of the EU Datathon and I will briefly remind you the rules of the competition. If you would like to apply and take part in the EU Datathon competition, what you have to do first is send us an idea for an application. You don't need to have a fully developed app at this stage. And your idea is the application that you think of has to meet two requirements. The first one is it has to use open data, at least one data set from the platform data.europa.eu, which can be combined with any other open data set or data sets of your choice. Requirement: Your app has to fit in one of the three challenges which are listed here. These challenges co correspond to the priorities of the European Commission. And this year they are the following, a European Green Deal, an economy that works for people, and a Europe fit for the digital age. You can apply uh, for the competition as an individual. Uh, you can also apply in teams of up to four people. You can apply as a company or any other legal entity. What is important is that you don't have to be an uh, EU member state national. We accept applications from all around the world. Mm. The deadline for this first stage of the competition is approaching quickly. <laughs> it's the 21st of May. We're waiting for your submissions until this day. Once we have gathered all the ideas, all the submissions, we will evaluate them and select three ideas, three teams for each challenge, nine in total. And we will invite them to turn their ideas into fully functional apps at this time and present them at the finals of the competition in November, which means that the selected teams will have around 19 weeks to develop their apps. At the finals of the competition, a jury will evaluate the apps and present the final ranking of the winners. As you can see, there are financial prizes for the winners, three prizes for each challenge. So all finalists will go home with a prize. Uh, on our website, you can find the recordings of webinars. You will find also testimonials of the participants uh, who participated in the previous editions. There are some pictures from the previous editions, list of partners quite long this year, uh, as well as very detailed rules. So you can probably find all the answers to your questions here. But if you still have some doubts or any other questions, please feel free to write us an email. You can also leave a comment under the recording of this video on YouTube or reach out to us on social media. Uh, now let's move on to our today's webinar. Uh, let me warmly welcome our today's guest, is per, is per Newman Anderson from the European Central Bank, who will present you with um, some data from the European Central Bank, which you might want to use when addressing the second challenge of the competition, an economy that works for people. Per, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Julia, and thank you very much, Simon, for inviting the ECP to participate with our data sets in the European Challenge. And what we I would like to share with you is that the ECB um, is one part of the European statistical system, so we have a lot of data available to the general public for use, in particular, in this um, competition. And this competition relates to an economy that works for you. So we have a very important uh, objective is to make um, the general public understand the economics and financial data that we have available. And if you are able to then use our data, potentially also combine it with other sources and then create additional added value, this will be extremely appreciated. And for this winner of this competition, we will also invite the winner to come to the ECB and make a presentation or demo of, of the results, so of the app. 
So what I would like to do is just to give you a short overview. And uh, Simon, how much time do I have for this? Um, how, how long time do you expect? Maybe 10 to 15 minutes, if that's okay for you. Yes, 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 sure, sure. So I have a document here um, that explains a little bit the data sets that we have available. And then at the end of the document, uh, I then have uh, the relevant links to all the data sets and how you can access and, and, and use the data and download it. Um, and also the web services, so you can automatically get it into your app that you may wish to develop. So this document, um, Simon and uh, Julia will make available for you as well. Um, so you can also see it afterwards um, from this presentation. So uh, the ECB is one of the two statistical offices in Europe. So you have the statistical office of the European communities, which is Eurostat together with all the national statistical institutes. That is one vehicle of the European statistics. And the second is the ECB together with all the national central banks. And Eurostat and ECB, we together um, share all the data that we collect. So there's no overlap. And we are mainly responsible for economic and financial uh, statistics. And we have on the website the memorandum of understanding. So it's very clear for everyone and also for ourselves who is responsible for what type of statistics. Irrespective of who collects it, we have the data of each other. So the data um, that we collect is presumably most relevant for the channel, the channels two, an economy that works for people. And I wanted to uh, provide you with an overview of six broad data sets that we have available, including also the methodology and also direct links, and also giving you uh, an overview of the scope of the data set. So the first data set that we have is what we call money, credit, and banking statistics. So this is all the statistics that are released on the ECB uh, website relating to the balance sheets of all the banks that we use to create and release the monetary aggregates. So it's the balance sheets uh, of the central banks and also uh, their counterparts. And this relates both to what is uh, available on the bank's balance sheet at the stocks and also how they have changed compared to the previous uh, 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 periods, monthly data. So we also have statistics on credit institutions, so other than banks, which includes also money market funds, other financial vehicles, investment funds, pension corporations, insurance corporations, uh, for the financial sector. So all relating to money, credit and banking in the European Union. These are the links to the methodology. So how is this uh, data collected? How are interest rates uh, calculated, for instance, and the different methodology that we're using. So it's harmonized across the EU. So therefore the data are all comparable across all kinds of countries meaning countries within the euro area. So that was the first data set. The, the second data set is a shared responsibility that we have with Eurostat. It's called external statistics. So this relates to all the kind of um, trade that goes between the financial sector and non-financial sector and the households. So the banks and the corporates and the household sector, all the activities that we have with outside the euro area. So this means all the trade, so trade, import, export, all the balance sheets of the, the member states of euro area residents. So this is um, a similar structured. So you have also the methodology, how is this trading statistics and who owns what? So who's issuing what type and who is, um, uh, um, who is investing. So it's the balance of payments and international investment position. That's the labeling of the data set. And here is the link to it. Then we have sectoral statistics. So these are the sectoral accounts. So these are financial accounts and government financial uh, accounts. So these are all the breakdowns of the economic activity of all institutional sectors 
that provides a complete set of, of who to whom in the um, institutional sectors. And the next data set that I would like you to be in particular aware of is that the ECB also uh, has significant amount of survey data available on our, uh, on our website. So these are surveys where we ask enterprises, so corporates and households, about how easy it is for them to have access to finance. Do they have um, some, some uh, liquidity needs that cannot be served by the banking community? Um, and also we ask the households, so that's uh, the retail, um, of their both financial um, access to finance and also their consumption. So we have household financial consumption surveys, so we can get more information relating to what are the access and how easily is it for both the corporates and the household to have access to finance and also what are their consumptions behaviors. And um, there are also similar studies uh, surveys done by the European Commission. And these we have also uh, included here and by, by Eurostat. So these are relevant other data sets that you may wish to link to uh, as part of um, exploring the data set relates to the survey statistics that we have. And then we have quite a core butter for central banking, that is uh, interest rate statistics. So these are banks' interest rate statistics. So this is what we label financial markets, so anything that moves in the financial market, and interest rate statistics. So in the first it relates to our core of banks' interest rate statistics. So these are all the rates that banks provide to the corporate sector and to the household sector for different purposes, for housing purposes or for consumption, or, or so like buying a car, or um, if you want to make an investment, so like building a house or... So these are all the interest rate statistics um, that is available vis-a-vis -vis also both the industry, so the corporate sector and the households, and for different maturity level. So you have fixed term rates, you have variable rates, you have up to one year, over one year, five year, 10 years, depending on the purpose of your investment. Secondly, uh, security issue statistics, right? So who is it who is issuing all the debt securities? How much are the government issuing? How much are the corporate issuing? How much are the banking sector issuing? How much gets redeemed? Um, so you have a quite a detailed mapping of all debt securities issued within the euro area, broken down by uh, who is issuing it and for how long and what kind of type. And then, of course, who's holding the statistics uh, at sector level. So, of course, one is issuing and another one is holding. So uh, there's a, there is an interaction, of course, between the issuer and the investor. So you can see the flows of who is holding what and by whom. Then we have uh, more related to financial markets as of market interest rates. So here you got yield curves. So these are the interest rates that you can pay. So these are the term structure of interest rates. So you can see what are the interest rates, so the yield to maturity, of um, government bonds from residual maturity of three months up to 30 years. So therefore you can go in and you can look at the yield curve and the yield curve is the starting point uh, of calculating all other types of financial instruments and the prices related to those. So we have a uh, money market um, interest rates. So these are the interest rates with the banks are lending to each other. Then we have Euro short term rates. Um, that is exactly this. this. So the euro short term rates are the daily rates and the money market rates are the rates that goes up to maturity up to, to one year of bank lending to each other. And the euro short term rates are the over overnight yields, interest rates. Then we have payment statistics. These are all the transactions uh, when you're using your cards, but also 
the transactions which banks are using for making payments on behalf of their customers uh, across uh, the globe. And then we have um, indicators that are developed in order to identify how well is the financial market integrated within the euro area. So here I have then listed all the different types of statistics that we have relating to um, uh, financial markets and interest rates and all the different types of methodology that is for the respective sets of statistics and the hyperlink to where you can find the data. And then also the BIS is a prominent source for other types of financial market and uh, statistics. The, uh, the next data set that we have, which is a new responsibility that the ECB has obtained five years ago, that is to do the supervision of the, the largest banks in the euro area. So there are around um, 3,000 large ba uh, 3, banks in the euro area, um, and the ECB is supervising the largest of those. So that is around 118 uh, banks uh, in, in, in the euro area. And from these banks, we are then calculating and providing and releasing the composition of their balance sheet and the profitability, um, how their capital uh, adequacy and leverage, funding, liquidity and data relating to the data that the ECB has started to collect for the last five years to um, comply and to supervise the banking sector. Within this banking sector statistics, we have some consolidated banking data and we have macro prudential data sets, which you may also wish to use. So we have also created the European Systemic Risk Board that are looking at the risk that are associated either at sector or at country level that provides recommendation to member states of what they can do to mitigate that these risks also materialize. And for that, we have developed uh, uh, the European Systemic Risk Board risk U European Systemic Risk Board <laughs> risk dashboard, so that I would have to practice a little bit, uh, which is available for you to like like a uh, um, traffic light system, uh, red, yellow, and green, depending on uh, the seriousness of the respective uh, risk that we have identified in the ESRB. Here is equally how the data uh, is the methodology surrounding the data and how you can get access to it. So lastly, then, um, if you want to explore the data sets uh, that we have at the ECB, then there are at least three ways you can access it. So the ECB statistics is not only available in the ECB, it's also available in the new portal of the uh, publication office um, that is available. And then we also, of course, the data is also accessible via Eurostat, the BIS, the IMF, World Bank. It's available uh, at, at, at many different other locations. But we have a statistical data warehouse, which is the flagship. So this is where we store all the respective data that we release to the public. Then we have uh, the main ECB website. So there we have limited numbers, but there's a good overview of how statistics is organized and the structure and all the data sets that is made available with some snapshots available on the ECB website. Then we have a third way uh, of accessing the data and also visualizing It's called Euro Area Statistics website. And on this website, we are using a common language, so lean language um, that is, uh, is not using central banking and economical methodology, uh, but using what is the spoken language and lots of visualizations. So there you can easily via visualizations compare the performance of different countries, interest rate levels in different countries, different types. So there we also have our blogs. We also have the ECB Twitters. Uh, we also have small description insights of our statistics. So this is a, a, a website that tries to easily um, digest the core set of statistics and also 
Uh, it's digital reusable, so you can embed the visuals in your own websites or in your web, uh, in your app that you may wish to to develop. Then you can have the visuals automatically on your on your website or on your app. And whenever the data automatically gets updated on the website, they would also be updated in your app. So I hope uh, that has stimulated uh, your interest in the data that is available at the ECB. And then uh, I have also included a glossary because we all use a lot of appropriations in our respective fields, but they are all explained here in this document, all the data sets, how to access it, and all the um, appropriations that we use. Thank you very much, Simon and Julia. Thank you for this very interesting and complex presentation. Um, I guess we can start with, with some questions now. Um, I, I have one question in mind. The, the challenge is quite broad, an economy that works for people is it, a broad topic. From your perspective, um, as a person who works at the European Central Bank, are there any particularly pressing issues or uh, areas of economy that you, you would advise the participant to address specifically? Now, that's a beautiful question um, because um, there is such a rich source of information. And uh, what we in particularly are interested in is to serve, of course, the broader purpose of, of the, the general public. And in any way that it can facilitate the understanding and the, um, and the uh, statistics that is available, is highly important. So we are trying to do our utmost to make our statistics uh, usable, to become user friendly, uh, to be linked with other data sets to add additional insights, and also to have the ability to compare the performance of the, the banking and the financial sector with other economical territories um, in, 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 in this world. So um, it's in that sense, um, if one can take a concept and then explain it in such a way that a non-central banker can understand and use it, then one has achieved a lot uh, by contributing to this competition and contributing to facilitate the use of the important statistics for it to be used by others, right? So. Of course, if the statistics and the data, which is sound based methodology are not being used to its potential, then people will use other type um, and maybe even lower quality data. And therefore uh, that can have quite a lot of impact to the welfare of our societies as they move into policy decisions as such. So anything that can facilitate that the official data is being used by think tanks, the European Parliament or uh, the European Commission as part of feeding into the national politics uh, so they can take evidence-based decision based on high quality statistics that is made available by ECB and also of Eurostat. Thank you. Simon, Maria, do you have any questions? Um, per, many of your data sets were like time statistics. Um, uh, are there also already data available for 2020, so for the pandemic year? Yes, yes. Uh, our our data is, is near real time updated. So we have monthly and quarterly data and we have the flow of the data. Um, so now we are in March, um, so we already have April data out. So uh, the data are, are fully uh, aligned with the production um, timetables that we have. And all our data follows uh, release calendars, uh, which is also available on the ECB website. So you can easily see when the next data will be released. Uh, we have um, data that are daily data. So the your, the your short term rate is daily data and our yield curves are daily data. One is released every day in the morning around nine and the yield curve is released every day at 12 o'clock. So that is related to data as of yesterday's data. 
then of course we have daily um, foreign exchange rates, which are also daily data and also goes back the day before. Um, and otherwise, our, we have regular monthly production data and quarterly production data. And these follows very clear and transparent both methodology, but also release calendar. So you can see when, when the data is being released. Great. Thank you, Per. And um, picking up on that question, are there also specific data sets maybe for Corona and COVID-19? Yes. So, um, yes, there is. So, first of all, um, I wanted to tell you, of course, um, for the previous question, that all our data sets are available in time series. So, it's easy to then track it over time. Uh, so these are easily downloadable, both in manual terms, but also in machine uh, readable firms. So machine readable, so machine to machine. Um, and this is uh, available using our web services. Um, yes, the data relating to COVID is also available. And we are soon releasing a new insight that we are producing that shows how consumer savings uh, rates compared to income have changed. Uh, over time, and also the CCSA, the Committee of Collaboration of um, Statistical Agents across the globe, has just released the third edition of their uh, uh, publication of what statistics is available on COVID, uh, which is available on the website of the United Nations uh, website in New York, uh, where one can see all international statistics organizations contribution to develop statistics relating to COVID, of which the ECP has also contributed. So that would be probably the best source for having most statistics available, consolidated from each organizations by going to the website of the United Nation and look for this statistical publication of COVID. Sounds great. And uh, maybe one last question from my side, uh, as you are already a EODATATON, um, well, as you have so much experience, what would be your tips for teams if they want to participate and use ECB data? No, but that, that's a very good question, Simon, because uh, in the previous years, we have obtained a lot of wonderful and really sophisticated uh, applications on the use of the data. Um, and I think my tip will be to keep it simple. Keep it simple and make it easily usable for those who has to use the app. Um, so um, don't don't be triggered too much of, of your sophistication of how to make it more complex. Um, try to phase it in as time goes. So start with some user-friendly, important core data that can has a narrative, and then build upon it by linking other data sets to it. And then at the third stage, uh, then add additional insights uh, to the data. But try to keep it simple, uh, because then, of course, it, it becomes easier to use by the, the general public and therefore it will have a broader outreach and therefore uh, the success of your application would even be bigger in the end. Thank you. Great, thanks. Back to you, Julia. Thank you. So if there are no more questions, um, Per, thank you very, very much for the presentation and for all the helpful tips. I'm sure that the participants will find it very useful. Uh, to finish this webinar, I would like to remind everyone that we are waiting for your ideas until the 21st of May. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate and get in touch with us.